Happy New Year everyone and welcome to the Hobby Farm Guys Barn. I'm Brian and I'm Steve and controlling the big ball drop from behind the scenes is Eric. You guys realize New Year's Eve is tomorrow, right? Well, we figured we better get a start early. The New Year is a time to both reflect on the past and look forward to the future. And that's what we have planned today. Stick around to see what we learned on our farms and what we hope to accomplish in the coming year. So while there are always lots of things I learn each year, and plenty of things I wish I'd done differently upon looking back, my top two lessons learned this year were really the same lesson, because I'm a slow learner. Right? We've often advised people to do some planning and preparation prior to bringing new animals onto their farms to make sure they have good experiences and can be successful. My lesson this year is deals with how I didn't do that. Of course, poor planning was at the heart of the lessons I learned this year too. And the crazy part is that I knew better. Like Steve said, we often advise people to put more into planning than they think they're going to need to, but apparently we don't always follow our own advice. So we'll tell you about the lessons we learned this year and follow up with a couple things we're looking forward to for 2022, assuming we put forth the effort to plan properly. Right. The first lesson I learned dealt with pigs. I've raised pigs for years and I love them but I've always only ever raised feeder pigs, where I pick up some piglets in the spring, right, and put them in the freezer by fall. This year, when I went out and bought home some breeding stock, I repeatedly discovered that keeping year-round breeders was much more involved than having some seasonal feeders, and I wasn't prepared. I didn't have areas for boars, for farrowing, or winter litters. I had to do some serious adjustments and some improvements, and I'm still hauling in water in buckets in dark and freezing temperatures because I didn't get all the improvements done before cold temperatures arrived. Now, my first lesson centered around my garden. I spent plenty of time last winter planning what I would grow, how I would irrigate, how I would fertilize, and even bought a tiller for my tractor to turn the soil. But what I didn't do well was plan the layout of the garden. Because we had a great growing season, my garden took off like wildfire. And before long, I realized the layout of the plants that I improvised was less than ideal. Some crops were crowded and others grew so large I had trouble getting through the haphazard maze to harvest my crops. And that's one mistake that I don't plan on making when I plant next spring. So my second lesson was like my first, right? I started the year with two turkeys, living with my chickens, no problem. I've routinely taken a couple of turkeys with the chickens throughout the year. Uh, they have their own little turkey hut, but share a large enclosed run on days that I don't let them loose to roam. This spring, I decided to grow my turkey flock. I added a few more birds from external sources with fresh genetics, and then I also hatched and raised a few poults. Most started out small and spent most of their time out roaming in the yard and garden, and it didn't seem like a big deal to have more turkeys. But as fall and cooler temperatures arrived, and the turkeys spent more time in the run, I looked out and saw not two, but you know, over a dozen turkeys out there, which had far outgrown that little turkey hut in the corner of the chicken run. So I spent some cold days up into early December building a turkey coop of their own. It would have been nicer and warmer if I'd been proactive instead of reactive. Now my next lesson has to do with my chickens. I've told the story in an earlier video of how I had to get rid of my rooster because he was overly aggressive. Well, since I had acquired a group of Delaware hens this year, I decided I wanted to get a Delaware rooster to hatch that breed next year. Well, I half-heartedly looked around the local area and at Facebook pages to see if anyone had what I was looking for. And as it turns out, I never found one. So this spring, instead of hatching chicks in the incubator, I'm going to be buying them. And now I still need to find the rooster that I want. I should have just found a hatchery from the start and gotten what I wanted instead of waiting for what I wanted to find me. For next year, one of the annual battles I fight that I, is that I love to garden. But I live in sand. Not sandy soil, but sand. Which makes gardening a bit of a challenge trying to keep plants moist without leaching away all the nutrients. A couple of years ago, I started a small hydroponic garden in my shed, and I've been so pleased with the results that next year I plan on ripping out and redoing my hoop house and turning it into a Dutch bucket hydroponic system for tomatoes. Filling with a few heirloom tomatoes known for their outstanding flavor. Now one big thing that I'm looking forward to is finally getting the duck pond completed and bringing some ducks to the farm. The pond has been dug, the liner's in, and I have most of what I need to get the filtration system set up. I even have the shed that will be their home in place. That means I'll be working away this winter 
and I can't wait to see how everything comes together when the weather warms up in April or, or May or, or June. Uh, one big decision is left though, which duck breed to get. So if you have a suggestion, leave it in the comments and let me know what, why you think that is the best breed. Other things I'm looking forward to next year will be a couple of firsts for me, and that's farrowing pigs and butchering pigs. As I mentioned earlier, I've always just bought piglets, fed them to size, and then driven them to a butcher. This year, I'll hopefully see a couple of litters of piglets in the spring and be able to butcher a pig or two in the fall myself. I spent some time with a neighbor learning the basics of butchering, and now it's time to see how I'll do on my own. Uh, I hope you get rid of some of that bacon <laughs> if you need me to. Well, one other thing I'm looking forward to for next year is bringing bees back to the farm. We had a difficult spring this year, and neither of my two colonies survived. And with everything I had going on, I just didn't get new bees, so I ended up taking the year off. Well, I miss working the hives, and now that I have a big garden and some fruit trees on the farm, it'll be nice to have the pollinators there as well. Well, that wraps up our look back at 2021 and our look forward to 2022. Of course, the best thing about this past year was having all of you join us here at the Hobby Farm Guys, and we hope you stick around to see some of the cool stuff we have planned for next year. So let us know what you're looking forward to in 2022 or what lessons you learned in 2021 and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so we can experience the new year together. Thanks everyone and happy hobby farming.